We are having a, after transfusion of a 200 ml of blood, a patient presented with temperature up to 37.9. Which of the following substances is the most likely case? Cause of temperature is what? Interleukin 1. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time, please. Interleukin 1. There we go. This is why I said I like pathophysiology. It's very easy. A 49 year old woman consulted a doctor about heightened fatigue and dyspnea during physical activity. ECG is 50 per minute. Heart rate is 50 per minute. Do you remember when I talk about SA note, the beat? AV note, the beat? And then uh, Kokinji, I mean, bundle of haze, the beat. Now, PQ is extended. That means it's delayed. Aha. Uh -huh. You remember when I said, when I say PQ is delayed, it means that there's a problem with what? Arterial ventricular. Arterial ventricular. Arterial ventricular. So please take note. PQ is extended. If it is short, that means there's something else going on. QRS is on change. P wave quantity exceeds quantity of QRS complex. You see how all these questions are being formulated? It's the same question. Same. So this one is of what? Type 2 arterial ventricular what? Blockage. Type 2 arterial ventricular what? Blockage. So here, you are thinking of what? Of A. Type 2 atrial ventricular what? Blockage. Because we did the same thing in our previous video. I think yesterday also. And again, the heart rate is telling you that it's even what? An AV. Because for SA, it's 60 to 80. AV is what? Uh, 40 to what? 59. Whilst below, usually, uh, from uh, 39 to 20, we are thinking of what? Of a bundle of haze and so on. And so on. Then below 20, we can think of what? Uh, Pokenji. Aha, uh -huh, like this. A woman has been applying a new cosmetic preparation for a week that resulted in eyelid inflammation. So again, what comes to mind? You are thinking of what? In terms of ed edema formation, you are thinking of a problem with what? Micro circulatory what? bed or micro circulatory disturbance. And there's what? Hyperemia, there's infiltration and then painfulness. What type of allergic reaction was developed? Look at it. Cosmic, cosmetic preparation for a week. For a week, this is what? Delayed. This is not uh, immediate. It is what? Delayed. Delayed. So you are thinking of what? Type 4. Type 4. I always I won't go over it again because I've already said it in our previous videos, type 1, type 2, type 2, type 2. So please go do well to watch the videos, okay? Otherwise, we will be, we will be repeating ourselves over and over again. And some of you need to rest. So here's what type four because it's what delayed, delayed, delayed. We have a patient followed up an endocrinological dispensary on account of hyperthyreosis. Weight loss is there, tachycardia, finger tremor, accompanied with what? hypovolemia, symptoms like headache, fatigue, eye flicker. What mechanism? of thyroid hormones action underlines the development of hypoxia. So they want to know how is this, uh, how does the thyroid hormone lead to the development of what? Of hypoxia, of hypoxia. First of all, you must know what hypoxia is, okay? So tissue hypoxia or histotoxic hypoxia, it arises when there is a dissociation or uncoupling of processes of oxidation and phosphorylation reaction in the respiratory chain. I repeat, it arises when there's no connection, that is what, dissociation, or there is no coupling of oxidation and phosphorylation reaction in respiratory chain. In other words, we know that oxygen is needed for oxidation and phosphorylation. And generally when we say hypoxia, it means low amount of oxygen. So when there's low amount of oxygen, the mechanism that will not lead to the signs and symptoms 
is that there is no oxygen to undergo what oxidation, to undergo what phosphorylation or activation of what substances. So basically, that is what uh, tissue hypoxia is all about. So over here, what are we thinking about? We are thinking about disjunction, also known as what dissociation of oxidation and phosphorylation reaction. So here we are thinking of what E as our answer. Again, oxygen is needed for oxidation and phosphorylation. So when there's no connection or there's disjunction, it leads to what hypoxia. It leads to hypoxia. Okay. Again, I tell the same question, but in a different way. They said a 56 year old patient has been suffering from thyroid of the course for a long time. What type of hypoxia is it? You remember over there, we talk about what? Tissue what? Hypoxia. Tissue what? Hypoxia. We talk about tissue hypoxia. Or histotoxic. Histotoxic. So we are talking about what? Tissue. Tissue. Tissue hypoxia. But for the sake of learning, let me go through some of the hypoxias we are having. But the answer is what? It's definitely what? Tissue hypoxia. Tissue hypoxia. So what then is respiratory hypoxia? So that when a question comes on respiration, you know that, oh, this one there is respiration hypoxia. Respiration hypoxia arises as a result of respiratory insufficiency due to alveolar hypoventilation. Alveolar hypoventilation. In other words, when somebody is having what? Dyspnea, that's difficult to breathe, it can lead to what? Respiratory, or that is actually called what? Respiratory hypoxia. Respiratory hypoxia. And I've already explained the tissue hypoxia already to you, but medically, uh, uh, basically, it deals with inability of the tissues to utilize oxygen, to utilize what? Oxygen, which results in your tissue poisoning, tissue poisoning. And the ability, the ability to utilize it is when it's able to what? To undergo what oxidation and phosphorylation. So that is what tissue hypoxia, tissue hypoxia. All right. And now we can also talk about circulatory hypoxia or cardiovascular hypoxia, cardiovascular hypoxia, which occurs during the disturbance of blood circulation. Yeah. Guys, excuse me. What was it? Yeah, yeah but I'm going to know also. Next one also, the so called also, but has it your own idea? How much of it? Guys, sorry for that. Uh, transmit break of transmission. Good. So, I was talking about uh, circulatory hypoxia or cardiovascular hypoxia, and I said it deals with a disturbance of blood circulation due to the heart or vessel pathology, a heart or vessel. Pathology that this is circulatory, 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 circulatory. Basically, these are the main. And we'll talk about the hem. Hem is what blood, 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 blood. So in case we have what all this carbon monoxide or carbon, uh, yeah, carbon monoxide and all those things, it can lead to what hemic hypoxia, whereby the hemoglobin is not able to bind with normal with oxygen. But whether it binds with what? Carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide, sorry. So it can cause what? Uh, hypoxia as well. And when we say mix, it's when everything is there. I mean, every type is there, basically. So here, we are talking about tissue, tissue, tissue. All right. An animal with aortic valve insufficiency got hypertrophy of left heart ventricle. Again, we understand aortic valve insufficiency. That means the aorta is not able to, to pump blood out of the system. So as a result, the blood will regurgitate. As a result, oh, people are online, I didn't see. So as a result, the blood will be regurgitated. Yes. Welcome. Yeah, so. Welcome. All right. So as a result, the blood will regurgitate backwards into the, the ventricle. And that can lead to what? Hypertrophy over there. 
But that's not the question. That's not the main idea. Now look at it. Some of its parts have local contractors. What substance accumulated in the cardioside caused this contractor? Let's kindly mute our microphone. Microphone, let's mute it. Okay, thank you. Great. So we're talking about contractors. But the question is, what is responsible for contraction in the cardiac muscle? What is responsible? Usually, a cardiac muscle will contract with the use of what energy, and usually it deals with what calcium. It deals with what calcium. It deals with calcium. Because calcium also helps in what in cell depolarization before repolarization was occurs. So when you are seeing all these contractors taking place, then definitely we are looking out for what for uh, calcium. We are thinking of what calcium. We are thinking of calcium. So here. We are doing what? Calcium, calcium, calcium. So the answer should be, answer should be A, calcium. All right. Now, a girl is diagnosed with adenogenital syndrome. A girl diagnosed with adenogenital syndrome. This procedure has, was caused by the hyper secretion of which of the following things? So the person is coming from what? Adenogenital with syndrome or pseudo uh, hermaphroditism. That means hermaphrodite, right? So a girl having pictures of what? Of a man. Of a man. So what comes to mind? Of course, you are thinking of what? Androgen. You are thinking of what? Androgen. So the condition is also called what? Congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Congenital adrenal what? hyperplasia, which is characterized by enlargement of the adrenal glands, resulting primarily excessive secretion of androgenic hormones by the adrenal cortex, by the adrenal cortex. So again, we are thinking of androgen, androgen. The answer is A. I love this. The patient has extra systole, that means it's beating what? It's not resting between beating. Okay, so it's beating I don't have to, I have to even put it, but extra is typically or a premature contraction of the heart or a premature heartbeat. Uh -huh. That's a, a premature heartbeat. That's what extra system. Now, ECG shows no P wave. No P wave. Here, complex is deformed. There is a full compensatory pulse. What extra systole are these? What extra systole are these? Again, there's no P wave present. QRS is deformed. That means that whatever the, the pulse is coming from, it's not coming from what? From the SA node, neither is it coming from the atrium or whatever it is. Because no P wave is there. And the QRS is deformed. So, like I said, an extra story is a premature ventricular what? contraction. Premature ventricular what? contraction. Premature ventricular contraction. And in ventricular contractions or extra systoles, there's what? A wide, abnormally shaped QRS complex. When we say wide, abnormally shaped, it means it's a deformed QRS what? complex. That is for what? Ventricular extra systole. Now, in AV or in atrial ventricular uh, extra systole, the P wave becomes more negative. P waves become what? More negative. Or even sometimes it is what? Absent. And sometimes it is what? Absent. It is not absent. So over here, we are either thinking of what? Atrioventricular or what? Ventricular. But the more, uh, the more precise one should be what? Ventricular extra system. Ventricular extra system. So here, your answer should be a ventricular extra system. All right. I think I've answered this question, but in a different way, in a different way. Look, 12 year old teenager has put off weight within three months. Glucose concentration is 50. He fell into a coma. You see, what the mechanism? Of course, too much of glucose needs to work. Hyper 
osmolarity or hyperosmolar coma. So this is what hyperosmolar hyperglycemic coma. We did it in the first in today's lecture. The first question was soon. We did it. We did it. So this is what D hyperosmolar hyperosmolar. As a result of increased permeability of erythrocyte membrane. So, so that means the membrane is faulty, right? The patient developed what? Oh, the, the patient has what? Micro uh, spherocytic what? Anemia. So, this is what? A membrane pathology, a membrane, membranopathy, right? Now, they say the cells receive sodium ions and water. What are sodium ions? Sodium ions. Like I said, the development of uh, edema, it could be what? As a result of sodium ions coming to play. Because sodium are what? Solutes and they are water uh, absorbers or they like pulling water onto the cell. So this way can actually develop what? Edema formation, right? Because sodium ions are there. Sodium ions are there. Somebody's asking me, I can't see you unless I mute this thing. I'm seeing some. Question. Please, if you have any question, after I'm done, you ask it, okay? All right. So, where were we? Good. So, we're talking about what? Sodium ions and what? Water. That means pulling them. And again, sodium ions are definitely what? Electrocytes. They are what? Sorry, they are electrolytes. Sorry. Sodium ions are electrolytes. Now, electrocytes take the form of spherocytes uh, and can be easily broken down. What is the leading mechanism? What is the leading mechanism of erythrocyte damage in this case? So definitely, we are thinking of what? Too much osmotic pressure inside the what? Inside the vessel, right? Too much osmotic pressure. And we said osmotic pressure or oncotic pressure, oncotic pressure could also be caused by what? Sodium ions. So over here, we are thinking of what? Sodium ions, which are actually what electrolyte, causing the oncotic pressure in this patient. So here we have what electrolyte osmotic pressure. That is the mechanism of action. Mechanism. Of action. So if you understand this concept, you don't have any problem whatsoever. No problem whatsoever. Good. I believe now this is becoming clearer to you, uh, Doctor Lucy. Good. Aha. Uh -huh. Look at this one too. This is your old patient suffering from cardiac insufficiency. You remember when we talk about cardiac insufficiency, or when I was explaining that when it has to do with hydrostatic pressure, we are dealing with what a problem with the heart where too much blood is not coming. Has edema of the feet and in the shins, edematous skin. What is the leading mechanism? Of course, we are thinking of what high hydrostatic what. Pressure. We are thinking about high hydrostatic what pressure. So here we are thinking of what of D. We are thinking of what of D. High hydrostatic what pressure. High hydrostatic what pressure. So the answer is what is D. Is D. Now everything is making sense. All right. So this is not on quarter pressure. No, 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 no. Because it has nothing to do with what with proteins. No. Uh, how do you call it? No solute such as no electrolyte such as so, uh, sodium. Okay. A disaster fighter at a nuclear power plant developed hemorrhagic syndrome. Okay, first of all, you know that nuclear plant will destroy all cells, right? It will destroy all cells from lymphocytes to whatever. It will destroy all cells. But the one that will kill the most or that destroys, first of all, will be what? The lymphocyte. This is by the way. So you know what you need to what? Uh, lymphopenia. Right? Lymphopenia. But again, this one I'm talking about what? Hemorrhagic what? Syndrome. So this hemorrhagic syndrome, definitely you are thinking of what? Platelets to be destroyed. Platelets to be destroyed. So here, you are thinking of what? Thrombocytopenia. Sorry. You are thinking of what? Thrombo. Cytopenia, thrombocytopenia, as simple as that. Thrombocytopenia. Because all cells in the bone will be destroyed, clinically. 
depending on the radiation, of course, and how long you are there without being treated. So there's a hemorrhagic syndrome. Obviously, you are thinking of a problem with your the protein. The answer is C. Good. Prophylactic medical examination of a 66-year-old driver revealed in his revealed that his AP is 150-90, quite high. At the end of working a day, he usually hears ear noise, shows slight indisposition that passes after some years. He was diagnosed with essential hypertension. So what is the leading pathogenic mechanism in this case? What is the leading mechanism in this case? Okay. So I don't know, but um, obviously, this person has what? This person is a taxi driver. Taxi driver. So this could either be what? Endocrine or even what? Hormonal. That leads to what? The hypertension or stress. This guy is stress. That leads to what? The hypertension. Stress. Too much what? Stress. Too much what? Stress. That is leading to what? To all of these things. However, Quark is saying that this is neurogenetic. I don't know why it is neurogenetic because there's no correlation between the question and even the answer. No connection because neurogenetics studies the role of genetics in the development of the nervous system. It studies the role of genetics in the development of the nervous system. So I don't know. I'm not seeing the correlation between them. I'm not seeing the correlation. So that's a neurological what? problem. It's a neurological what? problem. So I could have gone for either hormonal or endocrine, uh, endocrine. but hormonal will be much better because it will be stress hormones that are being produced. Stress hormone. But then Cox says this was neurogenetic. So please just take note of that. But like I said, this is due to what? The person who is a, a driver, driver, too much of stress. And you see, and this happen at the end of the day, working, at the end of working day, so you have been stressed out. Mm -hmm. All right. Violation of safety rules resulted in calomel intoxication. Two days later, daily duresis was 620 mils. Patient experienced headache, vomiting, convulsion, dyspnea, muscle. What pathology is it? So when you're having a duresis, that is this low. Usually, your normal duration is supposed to be about 800 mils and then two liters in most people. Two liters in most people. Either 800 mils or two liters in most people. But this person is having what? Oligoria. It's having what? Oligoria or reduced duresis or reduced urine formation. Reduced urine formation. And that can only happen when there's a problem with the kidney. But look at it. This person has what? Has calomel, calomel what? Intoxication. There's a calomel what? Intoxication. And in calomel intoxication, the liver, so this calomel is harmful to the body. So the kidney has to excrete all those what? Products from the body. It has to excrete all those products from the body. And as a result, it can develop what? Kidney failures. They can develop kidney failure. Kidney failure. So here we are thinking of acute renal insufficiency because this medication is happening uh, rapidly or progressively. It is not a long time thing. It's happening. So this patient has developed acute renal insufficiency or acute kidney disease, acute kidney injury, acute kidney injury or acute renal insufficiency. So here your answer is A. A. Good. Newborn with pyrostenosis, that means the pyloric part is what? It's narrowed. So what happens when it is narrowed? That means food cannot actually what? Go into the what? The duodenum or whatever. It can't go. So as a result, it will come out. That's why the patient has what? Often repeating what? Vomiting. Accompanied with 
by apathy, weakness, hypertonicity, and sometimes convulsion. What this other form of acid base is it, guys? I've already discussed this thing with you guys long, long ago. Long, long ago. So what are you thinking about? You are thinking percent of vomiting. Vomiting. So in vomiting, what we have, you are secreting a lot of what? Acid, isn't it? You are secreting a lot of what? Acid. So what happens into your system? There will be what? There will be alkalosis. Because acid is going out. So alkaline will start what? Developing. So you are thinking of excretory what? Alkalosis or metabolic what? Alkalosis. That is what you should be thinking about. You think of excretory alkalosis or metabolic what? Alkalosis. But if you look at our thing over here, we are not seeing that. However, the closest one would be what? non gaseous what? Alkalosis. non gaseous alkalosis. We could also mean excretory. We could also mean what? Excretory. So please take me. This is a B. 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 All right. 24 hours after appendectomy. Uh, appendectomy, blood of a patient presents with neutrophilic leukocytes. Of course, we said anytime there is an infection or there's something going on in the body, what happens first is what? Neutrophilic, what? Leukocytes, they will go there randomly. To start finding out what is the problem, and then start calling out other inflammatory what guys to also what come into what into place, come to play. But as well, there's what regenerative what shifts. What is the most probable mechanism of leukocytosis development? Of course, we are talking about amplification of what leukocytosis, amplification of leukocytosis. So first of all, neutrophilic leukocytosis is simply an abnormally high number of what neutrophils. Abnormally high number of what? Neutrophils in the blood, in the blood, in the blood. So what it means is that inside the bone marrow, there is what? Leukopiosis taking place, or there is what? Increased demand of these white blood cells. So there's what? Amplification of the leukocytosis or leukocytes. The amplification of what? Leukocytes. So they'll just come, get it, get it, get it, get it, and rest whatever that is causing the inflammation. Whatever that's going on, they can So here, you are thinking of, of A. You are thinking of, of A. Of A. All right. Fifty-nine-year-old patient had a plant manager. After the tax inspection of his plant, he felt intense pain behind the breastbone, irradiating to his left leg. Um, again, what comes to mind? Angina has developed in this patient. Now, 50 minutes later, his condition came to normal. Okay, so that means on rest, condition is what is normal. So this was a stable and then Now, which of the following possible mechanism of you see, as I tell you that spinocardia also means what? Angina. So which of the following possible mechanisms of spinocardia development is the leading in this case? Don't forget this person is a plant manager. It's a plant what manager, a plant manager, a plant manager. So there's no, because there's no pathological uh, history. There's no pathological what, history. I said the father, he said, plant manager, and he's what, a tax inspector. So after inspecting, after tax inspection, the tax in inspection, that's when all these things happen. So this could be due to what stress. This could be due to what stress. This could be due to a stress. So what comes to mind? You are thinking of an increased uh, particular means concentration in the blood due to the due to the activation of sympathetic adrenal system. Due to the activation of sympathetic adrenal system, sympathetic adrenal system. So here you are thinking of a particular means, particular means because the stress that is causing this angina. That's why when you rested, you were better. Or he felt okay. He felt okay. So the answer is A. It's A. Good. Now, after arterial pressure of a surgeon who performed long operation, he went up to what? 140, 190. You see, because he's standing there for long, 
fuel business, his BP has risen. What changes of hormonal regulation could have caused the rise of this one? Again, you are thinking of, of stress. The stress of standing for a very long time. Okay, it can lead to a high BP. So again, when there's high BP or there's increase in particular means, it means there is activation of what? The sympathetic adrenal system. Sympathetic adrenal system. So what comes to mind? D, activation of sympathetic adrenal system. Why? Because you're thinking of stress. And by stress, you're thinking of what? Capricola means. Capricola means. So the answer is what? So this, what the is there? It's sweet too. Hmm. It's sweet. 50 year old patient complains of chest. Okay. Drinking of a lot of water. Marked diuresis or diarrhea. Uh, sorry, marked polyuria. Marked polyuria. So this over here, you can of what? Maybe diabetes. They could suffer from what? Diabetes. But look at it. Blood glucose is 4.8, which is actually okay. It's normal. So that means diabetes can be ruled out because sugar is normal. There's urine glucose, okay? Acetone bodies are absent. Urine is colorless. This is a specific gravity. So what is the cause of polyuria? What is the cause of polyuria? So of, of course, this has got to do with, with diabetes. So definitely you take diabetes out of it. So what again can cause a uh, low amount of, uh, how do you call it, diuresis is when you're having what, a problem with what? The anti-diuretic hormone. When it's a problem with what anti, now anti-diuretic hormone means that it's supposed to prevent what? Urinating. Supposed to prevent what? Urination. But this person has been urinating plenty. So that means that that vasopressin or the anti-diuretic hormone is not functioning Effectively, it is not functioning effectively. So here, you could be thinking about vasopressin insufficiency. Vasopressin insufficiency. 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 So here, your answer is. Okay. A patient was ill with burn disease that was accompanied by DIC syndrome. That is disseminated intravascular what coagulopathy, coagulopathy. So what stage of DIC syndrome can be suspected if it is known that the patient's lab coagulates in less than three minutes? It coagulates in less than three minutes. I think when we talk about DIC, I give you guys the stages of DIC. I give you guys the stage of DIC. So what the is the DIC syndrome? A DIC syndrome is a pathological what, syndrome that is characterized by the formation of disseminated blood clots, disseminated blood clots in the microcirculatory bed, causing what, hemorrhages, as simple as that. Causing hemorrhages, hemorrhages. I repeat, it is characterized by the formation of disseminated blood clots in the microcirculatory bed or the, the capillary, the same thing. So when there's a disseminated blood flow, it can cause what? Hemorrhage. And there are these stages, write them down. Stages include hypercoagulation, hypercoagulation. And in hypercoagulation, there's an increase of blood coagulation in the micro vessel. There's an increase in what? Coagulation, increase in coagulation. So large number of fibrins, are formed. Large number of fibrins are formed. Then we have transitive, transitive, or transitional phase, or transition phase, transitive. This is characterized by the decreased amount of thrombocyte, decreased amount of thrombocyte, fibrinogen, prototrombin, which would eventually lead to what? Coagulopathy. Coagulopathy which will lead to coagulopathy, coagulopathy. So after this, the stage whereby hemorrhagic syndrome develops a lot, where there's low amount of everything, low thrombocytes, low fibrinogen, low prototrombin. Then the last phase is called hypocoagulation, hypo 
coagulation, hypocoagulation. This is where fibrinolysis activation takes place, making hemorrhagic syndrome more severe. So even the fibrin that's already there will begin to, go, to be destroyed. So we say fibrinolysis activation takes place in hypocoagulation, and this causes more severe hemorrhages, causing more severe hemorrhages. Now, if you look at this question, they said coagulation is taking place every, in less than three minutes. That means there's too much of a coagulation. Like I said, we have hyper, we have hypo and we have a transition. So this, we are talking about hypocoagulation. Sorry, hypercoagulation, hypercoagulation. Because coagulation is taking place every less than three minutes. All right. We have a 55 year old woman consulted a doctor about continuous cyclic uterine hemorrhage for a year. Usually, when the patient develops anemia as a result of having all the kind of uterine hemorrhages, or uh, let me say, uh, how do you call it, um, menstruation, they normally develop a chronic uh, post hemorrhagic anemia. They normally develop a chronic. Post hemorrhagic, but because this is, I'm thinking this for a very long time. And this was post hemorrhagic. Post hemorrhagic. Now there's weakness, there's dizziness, the examination revealed pallor again, means there's a, there is a anemia. Look at the hemoglobin, 70. The other side is 3.2. Color index is also was low. So color index being low, you could be thinking of what? Of uh, uh, how do you call it? Iron deficiency. You could be thinking of what? Iron deficiency as well. However, for the fact that they've told you that this person has been having what? A continuous cyclic uterine hemorrhage for a year. So this could be as a result of what? Menstruation. Right? Menstruation for a year. So definitely I think of a chronic post hemorrhagic anemia. So the answer should be E. Rather than iron deficiency. It's E. It's E. Great. Hey, another question again on uh, everything. This is year old, came to the hospital with complaints about general weakness, tank pain, and burning, sensation of limb numbness in the past, and I went recession. Guys, recession of the first tumor. And we said that when it comes to the first tumor, what comes to mind? We are thinking of what? Uh, intrinsic what? Factors. Intrinsic factors. Intrinsic what? factors. Now in blood, hemoglobin is what, 80? Erythrocyte is even low. Color index is even more. That means iron deficiency is not there. Color index is even more. Leukocyte is 3.5. What anemia is this? So definitely you're thinking of what? Problem with what? Intrinsic factor. So there is what? Deficiency of what? Vitamin B12 absorption. There is low vitamin B12 absorption. So here you're thinking of what? B12 folate deficiency. B12 folate deficiency. Great. All right. Mm -hmm. I love question like this. Too. A patient with acute myocardial infarction. Acute myocardial infarction. You know, in myocardial infarction, normally the part of the heart that occurs the most is the left ventricle. Because the left ventricle that pumps a lot of blood. Pumps out of blood, pumps out of blood. So that that place are more likely to be having what this myocardial infarction again. Myocardial infarction has to do with what insufficient blood supply to the cardiomyocytes, to the cardiomyocytes. But let's look at what happened. The patient was given intravenously different solutions during eight hours. The medical was uh, drop out one thousand blah 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 blah. Now he died. Oh, because of pulmonary edema. So the question is, under what condition can myocardial infarction cause pulmonary edema? So it is when the vessels, the ventricles are not able to now pump blood. Yesterday, is it Paul who asked a question on, on uh, fluid overload in the, in the heart or particular failures and right particular failures? I think I explained something like that. I even drew a diagram in respect to that. So when there's a problem with the left ventricle, or when there's left ventricular insufficiency, what happens is that 
blood cannot go into systemic circulation. So as a result, the accumulation of blood in the left ventricle would eventually flow backwards into the uh, left, uh, how do you call it, atrium. And from the left atrium into the, the lungs. So that can lead to what? Edema in the, in the lungs. So over here, we are thinking of what? Too much fluid in the left ventricle. Too much fluid in the left ventricle. Please, if you don't understand heart failure, I've explained it in the previous video. Do well to watch it. I beg you, do well to watch it. One thing that I build on everything, okay? I build on everything. So please, make sure you get the foundation right because I've already discussed this before. So here we are talking about volume overload of the left ventricle. Why? Because of my cardiac infarction. So the heart cannot be able to pump properly. In order to pump properly. So here, your answer is what? B. Good. 25 year old Palestinian woman complains of weakness, dizziness, dyspnea, and then in analysis, there is what? Exacerbating what? Anemia. Okay. HB is 60. That is low. Electric side is 2.5. Particular side is 35. That is too high. That means RBCs are gathered what? Not functioning properly. So more will start coming out inside. Then we have uh, anisocytosis and poikilocytosis of the erythrocyte. Then a lot of target cells and uh, polychromatophils. What type of anemia has developed in this patient? What type of anemia? So definitely, they're looking, they're looking at the problem with the what? With the RBCs. With the RBCs. And over here, we can be thinking of sickle cell anemia. Because sickle cell anemia, they will tell you about the exact uh, shape of the, how do you call it? Of the red blood cells. Okay, they'll tell you that shape. Either it's a modified form or it's a spherical in shape and stuff like that. So if there's not sickle cell, we can be thinking of what? Tela. Senior, thalassemia, thalassemia, and thalassemia is an inherited uh, blood disorder which is characterized by abnormal hemoglobin production. That's over here, hemoglobin is just 60. So there's abnormal hemoglobin production. Abnormal hemoglobin production. There are two types we have the alpha thalassemia and we have the beta thalassemia. Alpha thalassemia and then beta thalassemia. And how do you diagnose this? We diagnose it by using a complete blood count or hemoglobin electrophoresis. So we're supposed to do a, 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 a hemoglobin electrophoresis. Now, all these anitocytosis and prophylactosis is just an adaptive mechanism by the cells to compensate for the inability of what? Hemoglobin to bind with oxygen. To bind with oxygen. So here, we are thinking of what? Thalassemia. Thalassemia. So the answer is what? B. A 23-year-old patient complained of weakness. Temperature is 48, point, eh? 48 to 38 to 40, sorry. The liver and the spleen are enlarged. Hemoglobin is 100. Erythrocyte 2.9. Leucocyte 4.4. Thrombocyte 48. 48. That's quite low anyways. Then we have a uh, sediment for nuclear neutrophil 17. Lymphocyte 15. Guys, look at something here. Blood cells, 68%, 68%, 68%. That tells you that this cell is going to what they call leukemia. It's going to what a leukemia, blood cell. And they say all oh, the chemical reactions are negative. Make your mathematical conclusion. Definitely, person is suffering from what? A leukemia. For example, a leukemia. Also, what? Leukosis. And with blood cells, it means the cells are what undifferentiated. Because if cells are differentiated, it will tell you whether it is of myeloid origin or a lymphocyte origin. But these cells are not what differentiated. They are not what differentiated. So it could be either way. So it could be what of lymphoblastic origin or myeloblastic. But since it is not differentiated, we can go in for what undifferentiated mucosis. Or undifferentiated leukemia, undifferentiated leukemia, undifferentiated leukemia. So your answer is A.
undifferentiated leukemia. Inflammatory process causes symptoms of protein acute phase, protein of acute phase in an organism. What substance stimulates their synthesis? Again, apart from temperature, this interleukin one also causes what? Acute phase of what? Protein synthesis. We call it acute phase of protein synthesis. So when we see it in a C reactive protein, I don't know if I've said it before, C reactive protein, C reactive protein. So again, we're talking about interleukin one, interleukin one, interleukin one, interleukin one. All right. A chemical burn cause esophagus stenosis. The esophagus is what? Steno, that means it's narrow. Difficulty of indigestion led to abrupt loss of food. Cause. The blood is three, uh, HB is 106. Crude protein, I'm seeing messages, I'll check them after this discussion. Crude protein is 57 gram per liter. What type of starvation is it? What type of starvation is it? First of all, what is starvation? Starvation is a severe deficiency in calorie energy energy intake. Calorie energy intake below the level that is needed to maintain an organism's life. That is what starvation. Starvation. So there's what deficiency in energy intake. Deficiency in energy intake. And it can be complete or incomplete. Complete or incomplete. Now, starvation is said or is considered to be complete if only water enters the organism. If only water enters the organism. For example, those who like fasting or Muslims, Christians, you know, we normally fast, okay? So we are going to what we call what? a complete starvation, whereby it's only water that we drink. So I never don't even drink even water, nothing at all, nothing at all. Then we have incomplete starvation, incomplete starvation, where we have an insufficient amount of food entering into the, what, the organism. Insufficiency amount of food entering the organism, which is quite less than needed. So it is less than needed, less than needed, less than needed. So over here, we could be thinking of what? It's you know, not incomplete, incomplete. So it's eating, but it is in low quantity, in low quantity. And again, we also have another type of starvation called absolute, absolute. Like I said earlier on about those who fast, who don't act, even who don't drink even water. So over here we have what? They don't take water nor food. So water nor food do not enter into the, the organism. Water or food don't enter. So that one is what? absolute, 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 absolute. So here, we are thinking of E, 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 E. All right. Good. I like this topic because yesterday we discussed this question. A 42 year old woman with a neuralgia of the trifacial nerve complains about periodic reddening of the right part of her face and neck, sense of warmth gush, increased skin sensitivity again, I think of what? Hyperemia, arterial hyperemia, right? Because it's warm to touch. Arterial hyperemia, redness, arterial hyperemia. So this uh, effect can be explained by the following type of arterial hyperemia. Now, when we talk about arterial hyperemia, you know of what? Neurotonic, neurotonic, and you know of what? Paralytic. And we said in paralytic, what happens? There's a removal of the what? The parasympathetic nervous system, right? On top of the neurotonic, we're dealing with what? Activation of what? The parasympathetic nervous system. Parasympathetic nervous system. Obviously, this is not neuroparalytic, but rather what? Neurotonic. Neuro. So don't forget, there is a neuralgia, that's pain of the trifacial nerve, pain. So this could lead to what, uh, a decrease in what, or this can lead to 
parasympathetic activation. Parasympathetic activation. So here we are thinking of what of A. Thinking of what of A. All right. Patient who comes who suffers from acute myocarditis, acute myocarditis, have clinical signs of cardiogenic shock. What is the under-mentioned progenitive mechanism? Look, cardiogenic shock, that means it's a problem from the heart. So, now when we say shock, it means low amount of what? BP, or there's low BP, there's like a low BP. So if it is of the cardiac origin, that means the heart is having a problem with what? Pumping. Heart is having a problem with pumping. Problem with what? Pumping. So here, you are thinking about a disturbance of the pumping ability of the heart. Disturbance of the pumping ability of the heart. Why? Myocarditis, inflammation of the heart, and it is what cardiogenic shock. That means this shock is from the heart. It's from the heart. So what does the heart do? It pumps blood. It pumps blood. So when there's in a, in a low amount of blood in the vessel, it can lead to what? Shock. So the answer is D. On the sixth day of treatment, a patient with acute renal insufficiency develop what polyuria. Again, we talk about renal insufficiency, that means kidney failure, right? So develop what polyuria, that means water will keep what flowing. Now, duration, that is urination, duration intensification at the beginning of polyuria stage of acute renal insufficiency is caused by what? So that means that when the duration was taking place at the beginning, what was the mechanism of action? Again, I said what there is what kidney failure, kidney what failure. So what was the insufficiency? The insufficiency was what there were no what uh, nephron. The nephrons were reduced. Nephrons were what reduced. Nephrons were what. But we do so nephrons will not be what we need at the time and the nephros is the basic functional unit of the kidney is the basic functional unit of the kidney so here you are taking up a problem relating to the kidney and over here you are talking for a renewal of the filtration in nephrons renewal of the filtrations in the nephrons so that one it was decrease it was insufficient that was of course what the polyuria, because they have been destroyed, because there's what acute renal failure, acute renal failure, acute renal failure. So here you are thinking of, it, of A. It's not of A. All right, but let me just add this uh, ten to eight for you guys. So normally we have four stages of, or four phases of acute renal insufficiency. Four phases. We have phase one. Phase one is the onset phase, onset phase, which is due to kidney injury, kidney injury. So sometimes somebody can have a kidney injury, and that is due to what? Phase one, or that's what onset phase, phase one. In phase two, we have oligorrhea, oligorrhea. That's urine output decreases from renal tubal damage. When, uh, Urine output is what is decreased. And then in three, we have diuretic phase, like in this phase, duration duplication. We have the diuretic phase. And this phase, the kidneys tries to heal and urine output what increases. Urine output what increases, but the tubal scarring and damage will occur. So there will still be what scarring. Scarring. So eventually, this person will lead to what? Uh, oligorrhea. To a little bit so this person is, is in, the, what, in phase three. Now in phase four, we have the recovery phase where tubular edema resolves and renal function improves. And renal functions improve. So that is that for uh, acute kidney or acute renal insufficiency.